next phase of the Tennessee homesteading project is water, off-grid water. So we picked up these two IBC 330-gallon totes off Facebook Marketplace. Um, they were $125 a pop. Uh, might be more or less where you're at. I don't know. Um, but the guy also had two 75-gallon totes. And I asked him, I'm like, what's the difference? And he's like, you know, about um, 45 gallons. <laughs> no, he said, it's uh, $25 more tote for the 330s. And um, they're just taller. Uh, they're, other than that, the size is the same. So I was like, yeah, sign me up, you know, why not? Let's get some more water storage. So we went with the 330s, and step one was pulling them out of the cages um, and painting them. So there's a ton of YouTube videos on how to do that. Um, basically, you just take the top of the cage off, slide the thing out. And then most of these guys are um, just wrapping them up in, like, a plastic film and duct taping it. Or they're painting them with uh, Krylon. Um, we went a different route because this is going to be a, uh, a pretty permanent structure here at the Casa de Will. So, um, you know, I wanted to I wanted to do it right. You know, I want to create something that's that's going to last a long time and not give me any problems. Listen, anytime, <laughs> anytime I'm doing a project. Sorry about the noise. We got some uh, chicken activity, but anytime I'm starting a new project. Um, I'm, I'm going to be researching the heck out of it. And honestly, that's, that's part of the fun for me is, uh, learning something new. But anyway, um, I want to do it right. You know, I want to do the best job I can on this thing. I don't want to have to rebuild it, uh, five years from now because I regret, uh, some of the decisions I made or I tried to cut corners or whatever. So that's where I'm coming from with this build. Um, so it took a little over a gallon of Flex Seal. Uh, definitely more expensive than Krylon or uh, plastic and duct tape, but I think uh, I think that's the way to go. Um, why would you Why would you paint it? Uh, if you don't, if you just leave the tanks uh, to where the sunlight can get inside of them, you're going to have like basically a hydroponic uh, algae farm. Your whole tank's going to turn green, and it's just going to be uh, yucky sludge in there. So you got to you got to do something to keep the sun from getting in it. So that's like mission number one: keep the sun out. And then we went with black because uh, we're in zone 7A gardening. Here's my garden here. Just tilled it up and planted it. But uh, that's what these tanks are going to water. But um, that means it gets cold in the winter. I mean, not like New Hampshire cold. It's Tennessee, but it goes below freezing um, at night. And it's crazy, man, because the next day it'll be like 60, 70 degrees out. Then you get like two days of like... 20 degree weather and then it's 50 degrees out anyway um so anything we could do to uh, mitigate these tanks from freezing i'm all about it so that's why um the black the rubber actually might even help insulate it and the black's going to absorb sunlight and uh, hopefully warm that tank up a little bit during the day to preclude uh freeze damage i still have concerns about the plumbing that's going to be coming off the bottom. Not so much on the top because uh, that's not going to be filled up with water, but the bottom plumbing. We'll see what happens. If there's weather trouble, I'll uh, update the video. But anyway, um, so I got them painted up back in the cage. Definitely want to let that flex seal dry for like 72 hours. Don't be like me where you like get impatient and shove it back in the cage and then uh, it gets scuffed up and you have to do a bunch of touch-up work. <laughs> Um, yeah, so what's, uh, what's next? So I got all the materials for the job already. The next step is, uh, putting gutters up on the coop. And then I got, a uh, PVC plumbing and some specialty, uh, water collection items that will pipe the gutter water into the tanks. So since I got all the materials, I know exactly how much this job is going to cost. A thousand bucks, in case you're wondering. One thousand dollars. <laughs> so, I'll bring you back as the uh, as the work progresses, so you can kind of follow along, and hopefully uh, you get some insight 
Maybe I'm helping somebody else. I don't know. Um, if that's the case, don't forget to thumbs up and like the video. I got the gutters put together and screwed up to the side of the chicken coop on both sides. Um, they do have a little bit of downward pitch, so the water is going to flow from this side to that side. Um, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to do gutters, but it basically it was it was brick simple, um, just some sheet metal screwing and uh, caulking. But they're up. Then the next step was hooking the gutters up to this uh, three-inch PVC pipe. Um, that's just some some measuring and cutting on plumbing. A couple angles I had to make, but um, that's done. Now I'm running into a space issue because these IBC tanks are 52 inches tall, and I still got a bunch of plumbing that's got to go in from here. You know, all specialty stuff that's going in here. Basically, um, this part is done now, right? So the water is just going to free fall out of that into a little uh, box right here. It's uh, kind of like a, a box with a screen on top that's like on a 45 degree angle. And um, that filters out all the larger sediment and debris um, before it gets into the tank. So um, I got that part I got to put in and then my first flush diverter. And then I, off of that T, I'm going to come into the tanks. But um, I might have to dig out a little bit over here, um, which is fine. I got the feed side is over here, so um, that's actually uh, probably a foot or two lower. So I got plenty of room to work with. It's going to work out, is what I'm saying. But um, it's unfortunate that I have to dig. I just my roof is not tall enough to. Uh, to do what I'm doing but anyway um, you're looking at the foot end of the first flush diverter that I put together so um, you can see where that green ball is at that's going to be the bottom of the first flush diverter that's going to go up to that uh, screen box but that extra um, foot there is um, I just wanted to add some extra capacity to the first flush diverter and I also um, got the added benefit of it being a um, like a, a stand so the first flush diverter supports itself um, there's the end cap for it there when you want to clean it out you just unscrew this and um, take it off you can clean out all the junk but that's the uh, first flush diverter the only thought I had to put into this thing was um, Right here, I reduced it from uh, three inch down to two inch, and then it's going to go back to three inch. So this little green ball here didn't get lost in this uh, labyrinth and not do its job. So right now, it can't go past that two inch pipe. So it's going to stay up here and uh, do its job, float up, plug it, and then everything will be diverted off into the water tank from there. So that's where I'm at. Um, you know, the job's not without its complications, but what job is right? I'll bring you back for the uh, finish. All right, I watched some uh, YouTube videos on other guys making their rain systems, and watching them cut PVC was just painful. So, quick tutorial. Um, when you're cutting PVC, you know, you're going to take your measurement, and then you see on the PVC there's writing all the way down. Well, instead of, like, making a mark, you just look at where you line up on the writing. So if I wanted to cut two inches on this piece of PVC, I'm going to cut right here at the H on Charlotte. So then the best tool for doing it is a Sawzall with a uh, fine tooth blade. Most guys got them. but So then I'll come in on that H, and your cut doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It just has to be, a, a, you know, relatively straight. So... Then the burrs on the end, you don't have to come in with sandpaper, you just go like that. That's it. You're done. PVC's cut. Um, and then, you know, a lot of guys with the primer, they make a huge mess. You just want to primer it, you know, maybe an inch up 
And my dad always told me, you primer until the writing comes off the PVC. So until you can't read this writing, it'll wipe it right off. That's when you know you're done primering. You primer both sides, you glue both sides, push it together, twist it about 45 degrees, and you're all set. So that's how PVC works. All right, we got the job finished up, and now we're doing the reveal. So there's the gutter system I put up. That goes into 3-inch Schedule 40 PVC. Um, just got to make sure everything's canted correctly. And this is a 3-inch uh, Schedule 40 Sanitary uh, Y or Sanitary T. So you just got to make sure that that's oriented correctly so that the flow of water is going down into this specialty box here, which is like a pre-filter. It has a stainless steel screen here that's canted, so any larger debris is going to hit that and wash off, and your cleaner water is going to pass through that. And I, I kind of had to do everything on the uh, horizontal here. Most guys are going to do their setup on the vertical. Thank God this fitting on the bottom rotates so you can spin it horizontally or you can spin it vertically so you're, most guys are going to go vertical right down into the first flush I didn't have enough clearance I didn't have enough um, room between the tank top and the plumbing to make that happen so I, I went horizontal into the sanitary Y down to the first flush filter which is its own stand that worked out pretty cool when that fills up, then the water is going to exit the sanitary T or Y um, into this three-inch to two-inch reduce, reducer coupling down this two-inch line into the two 330-gallon IBC tanks through these two-inch uh, sanitary Ys. So you can tell this tank right here is going to take the most of the water. It's all going to drain right into this first tank. If any gets by it, Boom, tank number two is going to soak that up. Um, and then on top of uh, tank number two, I have a, uh, a meter. So this is just a two-inch um, uh, end cap with a screw top on it. And I just uh, drilled a hole in that, and it allowed the float to pass through. So this, I don't even honestly know how this meter works, but I guess I'll figure it out once it starts raining. Anyway. And then um, from there, this is my overflow. So the overflow comes off that side and out into the woods. Um, everything's got to be pitched downhill. At the end of the overflow, I simply put a hose clamp with some um, residential screening on there so that critters don't get back up into my pipe. So... The bottom plumbing, all these IBC tanks are going to come with um, different threading. There's like a whole bunch of different thread types, so you can drive yourself crazy trying to find the correct thread. I just sidestepped that whole issue with a two inch uh, Fernco. It's like a rubber sleeve that goes over the two, uh, two pipes and clamps down. So that connects both tanks the same way. Both tanks have a three-quarter inch um, shut-off valve that'll hook up to a garden hose on the end. And I like the um, the Fernco adapter because, like I say, I have freeze concerns, so that may give a little bit of play there to preclude uh, pipe breakage. Um, and it was just so easy to put together. And if I ever need to take a tank out or something, it's just a matter of... Um, unscrewing that fern co and the top here I did not um, glue this down this downspout in there that's the only part I didn't glue down on this whole top section so I can remove a tank if I need to or clean it out or whatever um, yeah I just put the hay down because uh, we have this really super tenacious orange clay here in Tennessee and um, basically if I didn't do that um, every time my dogs walked over here or I walked over here, I'd be tracking orange clay back into my house. 
and of course when it rained it was going to ricochet that orange clay all over my system everything out here was going to be orange so that's why you're seeing the hay um so what do i yeah so i guess i have the freezing concern that i can maybe take some hay and throw it over that um, bottom pipe section in the winter and uh keep it from freezing and the other concern was um venting so when you fill the tanks up with water or empty water out of them you know the air inside of the tank needs to be displaced by the water or replenish into the tank and i'm hoping that um it'll do that like this i'm i'm thinking this is not going to be a solid bar of water going into this tank that there's going to be enough gap in here that the air will be able to escape as the water's going in and vice versa we'll see with those two issues, um, if there's trouble, I will annotate it in the um, in the notes below, the comment section. So check down there if you're looking at this video in the future. If you don't see anything about freeze problems or any other kind of trouble, then you know everything's working. <laughs> but that's the system. Um, what would I do differently? Yeah. So here's the um, the original T that came with the first flush diverter. So that's what I would do differently. Um, these two parts, these two specialty parts, this box here with the screen and this whole first flush diverter system were stupid expensive. And um, I would, I, if I was doing it again, I would replace those with just store-bought parts. I mean, you don't know until you're actually holding the stuff in your hand, um, you know, what you're working with. But, like, for example, this thing right here, I would just replace that with, like, a 6-inch to 3-inch um, adapter. And then... Um, throw a uh, pipe clamp with some house screening on top of it boom that part was like 70 bucks i probably could have done that homemade adapter uh, option for like 20 so that's a significant savings and then the first flush diverter um i actually did it down here where i just did a um three to two reduction to keep that ball from going through you just throw a wiffle ball in there or, or one of those playpen balls or whatever and then um same thing up here three to two adapter and that's that's your first flush diverter on the end you just got a basically a um a threaded three inch end cap and you just drill a small hole in it so that first flush diverter system was like 60 bucks and i mean i don't know it's not worth it just um uh, store-bought solutions that uh would be easier and cheaper so anyway, there's the video. Um, if you dig the content I'm putting out, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, you know, if you got any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. And uh, I'm curious to hear what you think about it. Have a good one.